So week four, final video. This is how I want you to submit your week four homework. You'll have about seven sheets, seven parts. As it says here on the screen, I want you to add appropriate orthographic views for each part. Orthographic views must project from one another. So front view is here. Uh, top view is directly above it. Right side or left side view is directly to the right side. You have control over this. The orthographic view. Um, how you model the part and what orientation you model the part does not matter. You can pick a new front view, a new top view. Okay, You pick what you think is the best front view, what the best top view, the best right side view is. doesn't matter the orientation it was modeled in. Isometric view should be in the same orientation uh, that shows the same orthographic views, the same sides um, that your orthographic view shows. Make sure you add, number two, make sure you add titles to your orthographic views. You do not have to title them isometric. The isometric, again, is uh, it's a help for me to visually look at your part without having to open it and see if you created all the features correctly. So give me a shaded isometric. I'll just put it in a corner of a sheet. It should not be large. It's a thumbnail sketch in the, in the corner. Add that isometric view. Uh, that isometric view should be rotated as necessary so that isometric view should show the, the sides that you're showing the orthographic of. It should be shaded. Uh, there should be no hidden lines or center lines in it. I want you to add one dimension to each of the orthographic uh, parts. Uh, just one of the views. Pick like an overall height or an overall diameter. Some dimension that I would recognize. Okay, this is to check the units that you, you created it in the correct units. Edit the title block, put your name and section number in there, and uh, save the file, create a PDF file of it, and merge it with the other PDF files. And I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so let's get rid of this note here. When you first bring in an orthographic view, go to base view, find your name of the part uh, beginning so we're going to open up if we're going to do the index let's do the index part I would open up the correct title block the index is in inches so open up the inches template go to base view find your part let's do the uh, the index Okay. If you don't know what you want to what you want is a front view, let's make it smaller. Let's just drop that in the middle of the page and let's make click and drag out from it, project out from it. Several different views. You can also right click on the boundary. Right click and say add projected view. Okay. Look at all the views and figure out which is the most descriptive view. That will be your front view. Although if a part, if you were doing like a, a, a mug, okay, a mug has a top. So the top of the mug would probably be your top view, even if it is the most descriptive. Uh, make it a top of a part, uh, the top view. For this one, I like the indexers okay the the french fries as we call them i think that makes the best front view so let me shut off all the other ones we're going to have a little more room here so let's double click on there uh, go to general and make it a little bit larger you always want to make it as large as possible leaving room for dimensions we're not doing dimensions right now so we can make it yeah it might be a little bit too big Let's go to ratio. We'll put one in here like 1 to 1 1.5. There we go. And now I right click on the boundary and say add projected view. This would give me a top and a right side. Notice you can click and drag the views but this is the right side view it only belongs on the right side of the part don't move it to another part another 
And you might think, well, maybe we need the back side of the view too. Do we need the back side view? What would that look like? Can we get the dimensions for that feature in other views? Probably there. I think three views is all we need. So start with three views. Uh, you probably can do all the parts in three or less views. So pick your views. Then bring your isometric in. Go to base. Find your index. Go pull this down and go to isometric view. Now this is showing the right side view as our front view. So we're going to want to spin this around. So let's go to orient view tool. Pick the vertical axis. Type in 90. Hit enter. Spin it around till the front view is facing left. Okay. So that's good. Say OK. Now we have the correct orientation that the part is showing, or that the orthographic views are showing. Let's uh, scale it down. Drop it up here in the corner. We've done this part before. Double click on the boundary. Turn the hidden lines invisible. Make it shaded, fully shaded. And then click and drag around it, hit delete, and that will delete all the center lines. Add your titles below. The titles always go below the view. Try and line them up vertically with each other, horizontally. Okay, so this is the top view. This lets me know that you know what it's called correctly. Front view. You always have to name the views. The only time you wouldn't name a view is if it's the only view there. Then it's probably not necessary. So right side or right side view. Don't just call it a side view. Okay, check the center lines. Make sure they're there. NX will put in center lines for full circles. So it has this called the center mark center line because we have a full circle here. Okay, you want that center line to go to the outside a little bit beyond the circle. It gives a center line for the cylinder hole in the center and there, so that's good. The only thing we need is a dimension. Dimensions are placed just like uh, dimensions are placed in sketch view. Okay, maybe I'll pick a uh, radial. So there it is, four, double click. Well, if you want to straighten it out, it should be straightened out. Double click on it and go here and say horizontal text. There we go. So that verifies that you created this. It's on a English sheet. So it says down here English. Last step is to edit your title block, put in your name and section number. So when I get the PDF, I know whose this is. If you want to put the assignment here, you can put week four, assignment one. So that's one. Let's go to another one. I have some of these already created. So here's the dryer gear. Look at the views. This one still has to be shaded and fixed up here. Maybe an overall dimension on this. Oh, I do remember that the cylinder was like 1.99, right? So that's a good dimension. Just to pop in there and verify that it's in the correct units. Now we're not doing dimension yet. Some of you probably know how to dimension parts from, from drafting class. Some of you may not. An orthographic view is never complete until it's completely dimensioned. So what we have to do is look at this and say, how would we dimension it? You don't know how to dimension it yet. I understand that. Um, notice that the right side view, there is no feature seen in the right side view that is not seen and described um, in the top view or the front view. So the right side view is, is redundant. We do not need it. If you don't understand you don't need it, well, I will cross it out in your homework when you hand it in. I won't grade you down for it, but see if you can 
figure it out for yourself that this is not needed. There is no feature here that is that cannot be dimensioned in the other two views. Therefore, this view is not needed. Remember, the correct number of views is the least number of views that correctly show all the features. So for this one, we only need two views to correctly dimension it and give me a shaded isometric up in the corner. What do we want for the front view? It always comes in the orientation of the, the top view, okay? If you did it correctly, it should, that should, the front view should be the front view. Click to drop that, this side, the top maybe. Sometimes it's hard to see hidden lines. That hidden line shows you that there's only one slot, that it's only through the front side. The top view lets you see that the slot is only through the front side, so we need the top view for that. Sometimes hidden lines don't tell us or don't describe things very easily. What is missing on this one? The center lines for the two arcs. So over here is the center. Well, let's go click down. These are the different types of center lines. A center mark is a crossing center line, like a bullseye, okay? So if we go there, we can actually go click on the arc and it gives us a center line. You can actually do more than one and say OK. Now unfortunately, if you put a center line on top of a center line, you tend to lose this, the line type. So I'm going to right click on that and hit delete. So we just have those center marks in there. If you double click on the center mark, there will be an arrowhead and you can stretch the arrowhead make it longer. All text should be capitals though, all caps. The edit box typically looks like this. It's a, it's a dumbed down version, the smaller menu. If you click on the, the gear there and say more, you'll get more options. Or you can put in you text editing, uh, not there. You can edit the size here, the scale of the text though and other functions which we'll get to uh, when we get to dimensioning put in the isometric of the retainer base view retainer isometric there that's the correct orientation Hidden lines invisible, shading on. Orthographic views, remember, were, were created so that it's easier to dimension a part, so someone could easily read the dimensions and then create that part. We do not dimension isometric views. We don't put, typically, you won't see isometric views on a working drawing. I'm using it because it helps me to visualize what your part looks like better and maybe to pick up errors okay, that you might have created. Uh, if you don't unite features, sometimes it'll show up on the shaded isometric. So this is a sort of a checksum way for me to check your work without having to open you know, hundreds of files. Since it's so easy to, to put an isometric on a drawing, in industry you may see isometrics thrown onto drawings now simply because not everybody can read an orthographic view. Always make sure over here in the part navigator that the up to date column here uh, is all green checks so that that means the drawing is up to date. You should put your templates in the same folder as your models. If this is not up to date you can right click on drawing and say up to date. Everything will blink and it should uh, fix it if there was something not up to date. To make this into a PDF file, we'd say File, uh, Export, PDF, create a place to put it and a name. So you'd put this in, use your whole name. Your section number, and you can just call this week four. This will be the PDF sheet file name. So you put it in the same folder as your other parts. Say OK. Click on append to PDF because you're going to need this on the second one. 
make sure this is on sheet 1A4 size that will print to the outside border say OK go to the next part it says exporting there we go don't click more than once or you get more than one of in your PDF file go to the next part when you get it done you'd say file export PDF this is the last step you should do make sure all your drawings are complete they look right no more mistakes okay fix everything and then um, make sure you go to append and put this in the same file where did I put those in my parts file there so I called this one uh, this file name and say OK do you want to replace it you're not replacing it; you're copying into it so you'd say yes and now it will have two sheets in it so you do that for all seven sheets if you find a couple parts that only need uh, two views each and they're in the same unit you could put them on the same page but seven pages is fine I do want all your parts to be in the same same merged PDF file if you send me seven different PDF files I'm gonna tell you to merge them and send them back what I'm trying to do is have you do you learn every homework assignment learn one more step one more step uh, so that by the time we get to the final project you'll know how to do every step and uh, there won't be a whole bunch of learning curve you know at the at the end of the class so I I do require to do it for you to put things in the correct format for each homework week five we'll do a couple more parts week six we'll learn sectioning so you do the same thing but a section view week seven will be doing dimensioning so you'll add dimensions so we just keep adding a little bit uh, week eight will be auxiliary views so you'll add an auxiliary view to a part it's pretty simple from here on just just try and keep up with the homework okay if you have any questions i'll see you on line and blackboard collaborate